Hey guys, uh, it's been a long time. Uh, I think like six or seven months since my last video. Um, I mean, a lot's changed since then too. I mean, this was pre-pandemic. Uh, uh, and yeah, basically the whole world's changed uh, since then. Um, I, I've been busy. Um, I've, you know, I haven't had really the motivation to do videos uh, these past few months. I've been playing a lot of games, uh, obviously. I mean, I was laid off for a little bit. Uh, during during COVID, so I had a ton of time to play games, but I just didn't have the energy or motivation to do videos for some reason. I maybe part of it was this that kind of depression that I'm sure a lot of people is feel are feeling with this uh, pandemic that's still ongoing, and the numbers are starting to get uh, bad again. At least here in Canada, I mean the U.S. They've always always been terrible, and they keep getting worse. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's I don't know. It's weird. I all of a sudden I just felt like the urge to do a video. Uh, a lot of f friends I know have been kind of getting back into YouTube a little bit. Uh, and I thought, you know, I, it's finally, let's let's get a video out there. And something a little different that I haven't done for a while, a collection video. Uh, the 3DS, uh, it just recently, uh, Nintendo announced they're discontinuing it, so they're not pro uh, producing it anymore. Uh, so I I don't think there's any more 3DS games coming out. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure there isn't. But uh, I thought, you know what, for the occasion, let's uh, go over my 3DS collection. Um, there's probably still a couple games I need to get. Uh, my collection is probably not what I would consider complete, and now I think is the time to actually go and get 3DS games. Uh, a lot of them are going to start to get a little bit more expensive, I think. Uh, so I'm trying to get the ones I want right now before they kind of disappear and start getting pretty expensive. Uh, the 3DS, a uh, great little handheld. I, I bought it at launch, actually. I was one of the very few people, I think. I was part of that ambassador program. Uh, I bought it because I hadn't really owned a DS before, like the original DS, and there was a bunch of games I wanted to play on that. So I thought it was kind of worth it for me. Um, and it, 3DS wasn't that great in the beginning, but over time it, it grew uh, and a lot more uh, awesome games started coming out for it. And then, um, you know, by the end of its life, it's, it's had plenty of amazing uh, games on it. I know a lot of people consider it one of their favorite handhelds. Uh, might be the last handheld we see, or last traditional handheld. Uh, obviously the Switch can be a handheld as well, but uh, it's, yeah, I thought kind of like an ode to the, the 3DS, let's let's go over the games I have. I And actually tr getting them, I have more than I thought. Like, I sold a, a decent amount of, uh, like five years ago uh, when I kind of slimmed down my collection, but uh, I, I still have a, a good amount of them and still a few more I need to get. So anyways, let's uh, get started here. Uh, so we'll start with this first one. Uh, we've got Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Um, I haven't actually played this yet. Uh, I think this was like a, a gift for a Secret Santa gift from uh, Bruno Snezmapper. Uh, unfortunately, I just haven't had the time to actually get into this. Uh, I played Luigi's Mansion 3 on the, the Switch, but I haven't played the original Luigi's Mansion or this one. Uh, and that's one of the games I kind of want for my collection on the 3DS. It's because I'd rather get that version. I think the GameCube version is starting to get a little expensive now, like with most GameCube games. Um, but I think the, the Luigi Mansion on the 3DS is actually a little uncommon too. So I, I want to get that before it kind of disappears. So I can't really say too much about this one. I've heard good things about it. Um, although some people prefer the first one. It's kind of mixed on that I've seen. But uh, yeah, unfortunately I can't really say too much on that one. Uh, next up, we've got Star Fox 3D, or 64 3D, I should say. Um, and uh, I've played the 64 version a lot. This one I haven't actually played yet. Uh, but uh, e this is my favorite Star Fox game. I'm not a big Star Fox fan, but I think 64 is easily the best. Uh, just some really well-designed missions to it, and it just uh, the action to it, I think, is pretty exciting. And it's, it's easier to go back to than the original Star Fox. Um, so I, I, I do enjoy this. It's not like one of my favorite games ever. A lot of people just love Star Fox 64. Like I enjoy it. It's not one of my well, my one of my one of my favorites. But uh, I've heard this is uh, the ideal version of this game. And definitely, if you enjoy the game, I think you should definitely try to track this one down. I think it's this is a player's uh, choice game. Like Dark Moon, that was a, a Nintendo Selects version. I'm pretty sure this is as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's got like tilt controls too. I. I don't see that being very good. I, I hate tilt controls for like everything, but uh, and I knew I had to have this in the, in the collection because I like the original game so much. Uh, okay, uh, Tales of the Abyss. Um, and I think I think this is gonna be one of those games that gets a little expensive later on. I think the PS2 version is already uh, somewhat expensive, and this is the only other version of, of this game that you can get. Um, and it's, you know, I think 
it doesn't look great. I, I think the visuals of this game haven't aged too well, but I did really enjoy the story and characters in this game. I think a lot of people will, will say that the Tales of the Abyss is the best Tales game. I, I wouldn't go that far. I, I certainly think it's a top five, though. It's definitely a top five game. In fact, it's probably been like my third favorite uh, in the series. Uh, mostly due to the story and characters. I think there's like a lot of, too much backtracking in this game from what I remember. Uh, and the battle system might be a little clunky compared to newer Tales games, but it's still really enjoyable. Uh, so if you haven't played Tales of the Abyss, I definitely think it's worth uh, tracking down on the 3DS if you don't have a PS2. Um, I don't know what the prices of this one are. I, mean, I haven't checked on that in a while, but I, I have a feeling this one might be climbing up, so you might want to try to get this one soon before it's just completely gone. Uh, okay, next up we've got WarioWare Gold. Uh, I love the WarioWare series, and this one is like almost like a greatest hits kind of compilation. Um, the one thing I don't like about this, it's got like blowing mini games where you have to blow into the mic on the 3DS and those just never work well. I hate that in like every kind of game, uh, which, so that's a little disappointing. I've never liked those games that much, but the rest of the games in here are great. Uh, it's just a great kind of compilation of a bunch of fun WarioWare style games. Uh, not my favorite in the series. I still think my favorite's the GameCube one. That one has just like amazing multiplayer to it. Uh, but this is definitely one of the better games in the series. Uh, and I really, really enjoyed it when I went through this. Okay, we've got uh, Bravely Default, uh, one of my favorite games on the 3DS. I, I really love this game. Um, it's definitely inspired by Final Fantasy V. It, it takes that uh, job system from that game and just expands upon it beautifully. A really great turn-based battle system in here that has a lot of strategy to it. I, I like the story and characters. I didn't love them, but I definitely enjoyed it. Um, this game obvious, is known for like an end game that is a bit ridiculous. Uh, it's just really tedious and kind of makes you do the same kind of shit over and over again. Uh, it didn't ruin the game for me like it did a lot of people, but it definitely does uh, bring the game down a little bit for me. I can't defend the ending of this game. I don't know how anyone could possibly defend the last like 10 hours of this game. But uh, overall, though, I still really love this game. Uh, and I can't wait for the second one on, on Switch. That's one's gonna, That's going to be awesome. Okay, we've got Kirby Planet Robobot. Uh, love this game. Um, I, I've generally always really loved the Kirby games. I think this is one of the best ones. Uh, I'm missing Triple Deluxe. I still don't have that. I need to get that. But I've heard this one's better anyways. Um, just I, I love the, the, the robot armor that you kind of control in this. I think it's a ton of fun. Uh, like most Kirby games, it's pretty short and it's pretty easy, but uh, still really enjoyable. Uh, and I think this one, this price is starting to climb a bit on, on this one. So I would also try to track this one down. I, I think Triple Deluxe is a Nintendo Selects game, so I should be able to get that one cheap, but uh, this one was, I can think, uh, this is a bit of a later 3DS release, so it might uh, get exp expensive later, but uh, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this one. Definitely, I think, worth a game worth checking out. Uh, okay, uh, Bravely Second, uh, following up on Bravely Default. Uh, better than Bravely Default, I think. It doesn't have the atrocious end game to it. It's a, a shorter game, uh, it doesn't waste your time as much, and it's got an improved battle system, uh, more jobs. Uh, I think the story and characters this time around aren't quite as engaging, but still pretty good. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, I think it was just a much more consistent experience, this one. So it also is one of my favorite uh, 3DS games. Certainly one of the best RPGs on the system. And I think this and Bravely Default, again, they're Japanese RPGs that are well-loved. They're going to get pricey later, so try to get these now. <laughs> these two. Uh, okay, classic game, of course. So we've got uh, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D. Um, probably the definitive version of this game, uh, just, just just because the frame rate's a lot better than the N64 one. Uh, and it's got the Master Quest on here too, which is fantastic. Uh, what can you say about Ocarina of Time? One of the best games ever made. Uh, one of my favorite Zelda games, though not my favorite. Um, and I still think the game holds up. When I played it on the 3DS, I thought it held up beautifully. Um, the soundtrack is just one of the all-time greats. I mean... <laughs> You know, I, I, well, I, am I going to sit here telling you why oh, Ocarina of Time is great? Everyone knows already. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a classic game and, uh, definitely, uh, worth playing uh, with this, uh, definitive kind of 3DS version that they've got here. Uh, this was one of the earlier releases on the 3DS, I remember. Should be a Nintendo Selects game too, I think. Uh, so it shouldn't be too expensive to get that one. Uh, okay, we've got Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D. I like cons uh, to consider this the definitive version of this game. Uh, the Wii version has the terrible waggle controls that just completely ruined it for me. Whereas this, you get your standard, you know, button and D-pad controls, how a platformer should be played. Uh, so I really enjoyed this game. I don't think it's as good as Tropical Freeze. Tropical Freeze is like one of the best platformers ever made. This is not quite as good. I think this is actually probably the weakest Donkey Kong Country game, if we're being honest. 
Um, I really don't like how the rocket barrel levels and the minecart levels kill you in one hit. That was one of the best things about Tropical Freeze. They give you two, an extra hit point. Uh, it just makes those levels way too unforgiving. And it's just they're just not fun in this one compared to Tropical Freeze. Uh, but other than that, though, the level design is terrific in this game. It's a lot of fun to play. It uh, provides a nice challenge. And uh, yeah, it's uh, much better than the Wii version, which I just couldn't get into. Because those controls it was a typical Wii thing. Every game had to force motion controls down your throat. Um, okay, so we've got Fire Emblem Conquest. Uh, I Birthright I have digitally. When you bought this game, you could like buy the two of them and Revelations, I think, for like a discounted price. Uh, there was also that three pack uh, where it's on one cartridge you had all three Fire Emblem games. That's one of the most expensive 3DS games now. If you have that, that's actually that's getting really expensive. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have that. I just bought Conquest physically. Uh, a lot of people hate these games. <laughs> As a lot of Fire Emblem fans think they're some of the worst in the series. Uh, Birthright I thought was kind of boring. Uh, Revelations I actually didn't like too much. Uh, Conquest I thought was fine. I, I mean the story is kind of terrible, but I thought it was kind of in, in, in entertaining with how bad it was, especially how like over the top uh, evil the main like the main uh, villain was in this game. Uh, I love the gameplay though in this. I really love the map designs in this. Unlike Birthright. Uh, they give you different uh, kind of mission objectives, and each map kind of felt different from the last. It wasn't just kill every enemy. Uh, that's what kind of made Birthright boring. At least this, you had nice uh, mission variety, and it was a lot more challenging than Birthright as well. So gameplay-wise, I don't know. I thought Fates was, uh, like Conquest at least, was actually really good. I really enjoyed it. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is kind of a, not a well-loved uh, trilogy of games within the Fire Emblem series. But I'm not like a hardcore Fire Emblem fan. I'm kind of like a new Fire Emblem fan. Uh, and speaking of Fire Emblem, we've got more. Of course, we've got uh, Awakening here, um, which is, this is the game that kind of made Fire Emblem what it is now. Uh, that series, like, no one gave a shit before this game. And now, and uh, like, I remember, like, Fire Emblem was, like, like Radiant Dawn for the Wii, you would find in bargain bins for, like, $10. That's where I found it before this, this game came out. This game comes out, and Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn is all of a sudden worth, like, hundred uh, more than $100. Like, it was crazy. This game just... And I don't know, everyone loves Fire Emblem now, purely because of uh, Awakening. Uh, and I've often wondered why that was. Um, I think maybe like maybe it is actually the dating style elements uh, that are in this one. Maybe that is actually what did it. Uh, probably a mixture of that and the fact that you could turn off permadeath. Although, I don't know many people that play these games without permadeath, though. Uh, but uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this game. Nice story and characters, great gameplay. Uh, I probably prefer Conquest still, just because the map design in this game still is a lot of just kill all the enemies. But uh, yeah, I definitely like this game. Uh, I think some hardcore Fire Emblem fans might resent this a little bit because the direction of the series has been quite different ever since this one. It's just not quite as hardcore as it, as it used to be, I think. Uh, but Awakening is certainly, I think a lot of people will tell you this is one of the best games on the on the console. Uh, I, there's another Fire Emblem game. I forget if I traded it in. We might get to it later. I, I can't see it in the pile here, but uh, there is one other Fire Emblem game that came out on 3DS. Uh, okay, Mario & Luigi Dream Team. Um, the Mario & Luigi series started off great for me and then just became, like, really shitty. Um, this was, like, the last decent one, I think. Um, I think it is too long and kind of, it's kind of sort of bland. I, I didn't think it was that funny. Um, but I thought it was relatively enjoyable. I finished it, at least, which I can't say for the later games that came after this. Uh, and then Mario & Luigi is dead now. Um, Alpha Dream, the developers of the game, they're, gone, they're no more. So I don't know if we'll see another one of these games, actually. And Nintendo just, it just, just feels, I don't know. And now with Paper Mario being not, like, that, that series not being really an RPG series anymore. I, I don't think they're interested in making Mario RPGs anymore, which is a shame. Uh, but... Um, there was definitely, the, the series definitely did progressively worse. And I think this probably kind of signaled it a little bit, uh, Dream Team here. Uh, LBX, uh, Little Battler's Experience. Uh, this is one of those games I thought looked really cool before it came out. Uh, it kind of reminds me of like Custom Robo a little bit, where you're kind of like uh, building your kind of robots and then uh, kind of battling them. Uh, I, I didn't care for this one too much, though. It didn't, it didn't really grab me. I don't know. I think the combat in it was a little too simplistic for me. It I, it just didn't quite grab me. And I I don't know. Everything about like story and characters were just kind of like bleh. I don't know. Some people really like this game. I think it's kind of an obscure game on the 3DS here. But uh, it's one of those games that ended up kind of being a, a disappointment for for me. I think Level Five made this. Uh, I'm pretty sure. 
Yeah, level five made it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not like the biggest level five fan to be honest. That's some of the games I really love. Most of them are kind of indifferent to words, and this is one of those ones that I, just, I don't know, didn't really quite do it for me. Uh, Final Fantasy The Other Rhythm Curtain Call. Um, just a really fun uh, rhythm game with Final Fantasy music, and I mean Final Fantasy music. What can you say? It's some of the best songs in video game history come from the Final Fantasy series. Um, the rhythm gameplay in this is like not my favorite, but it's still pretty enjoyable. Uh, so overall, I, I really did enjoy kind of going through this game. Um, this is, I guess, this like um, first print edition that comes with like a music CD with it, which is pretty cool. Uh, and there is, this is, oh yeah, Curtain Call is the second one. There was the first one. I don't think I have the first one though, but I think most of the songs that are in the first game are in this one. Uh, I could be wrong on that. So it might, if you really like the games, maybe it might be worth having both, but uh, I don't know, this one's fine for me. I, I don't think I'm going to track down the first one. Uh, Ghost Recon Shadow Wars, uh, launch title for the 3DS. Uh, apparently very similar to like XCOM and Fire Emblem. Uh, I've never played it. I still haven't played it yet. I've heard good things about it. Um, even though the theming of it doesn't interest me at all, like Ghost Recon, like military stuff just doesn't, I just, I can't stand that kind of stuff. But uh, I don't know, maybe one of these days I'll try to play this because I've heard it's actually pretty, pretty underrated. Uh, Codename Steam, uh, another, oh, well, actually no, Intelligent Systems uh, did this one. Uh, known for being a kind of a bomb, it didn't sell very well, and in fact, I got this for five dollars. Uh, this was actually only a few months after release, so that should kind of give you an indication of how this game did commercially. Uh, and for this one, I could not get into. I, I don't like this game at all. Uh, the big thing with me is like it could have been a cool like tactics game, but it's one of those games where you're forced to kind of rush the maps because if you're not constantly pushing forward enemies will respawn behind your units and it just makes the game just not fun to me it's just i don't have the patience for it and it just i felt rushed constantly playing the game uh the story and characters i don't think are very interesting i hate the game the way this game looks as well the visuals are very ugly um yeah no i did did not care for this one and it's so worthless that i i there's no point in getting rid of it it's still worth like nothing this game so kind of funny yeah, it's one of those weird nintendo kind of uh bombs uh shimagami tensei 4 apocalypse uh, this game is getting very expensive game uh, expensive now any smt game on the 3ds is basically shot up in price ever since uh what was it was it something very recent the shimagami tensei um 5 uh was kind of sh shown off again for switch for switch all of a sudden everyone's like oh i gotta go get the games on 3ds so this is a really expensive one uh, I love SMT4. Uh, we'll get to that a bit later. This one was disappointing, though. I, I didn't like this one as much. Um, I just didn't think the story and characters were that, that interesting. The gameplay is generally the same. And then the final dungeon in this game is fucking abysmal. Like, one of the worst experiences I've had playing through a, a game. This massive three-hour dungeon with teleporters. A giant maze dungeon with teleporters. And you get lost constantly. Everything looks the same. Uh, I was so like mad going through that final dungeon it really brought an already disappointing game down to like just a really low level for me um probably not gonna sell it because i'm sure it will get more and more expensive but one day i'll probably let it uh let it go from the collection just because i'm not not really that big into this one uh okay there, this is the other fire Emblem game i was mentioning uh echoes of shadows of valencia echoes uh, i think this one's getting a little bit more expensive now it's kind of a late uh, 3ds release uh, this Fire Emblem game I couldn't really get into. Uh, it's a remake of, what, the second Fire Emblem, I want to say, on, what, NES, I think? Uh, so it kind of feels old. There's some kind of interesting dungeon crawling here, but what ruined this game for me are the Cantor enemies. Uh, basically, these enemies that constantly summon new enemies the entire time you're going through a map. Uh, and basically, these guys make every single battle in this game take, like, two hours. Uh, and eventually I was just like, you know what, this is fucking stupid. I don't, I don't want to play this anymore. They, they just, that lone enemy type just completely ruined this game for me. Uh, and I have no interest in going back. So yeah, this one was pretty disappointing for me. Uh, okay, next up, uh, Monster Hunter Stories. Uh, this one's still sealed. I still haven't opened this. Uh, we're getting a sequel actually on Switch. Uh, we'll see if this game actually gets expensive later. Um, I mean, I, we'll, I guess we'll see, right? Uh, I've heard really good things about this, uh, almost like an anime monster game with like Pokemon style elements to it. Uh, looks cool. Uh, I gotta get to this one of these days, especially before this uh, sequel comes out soon. 
Okay, now we've got uh, Rhythm Thief, uh, The Emperor's Treasure, another game that's getting really expensive, although this game was getting expensive like yeah, even a couple of years ago. Um, I've heard it's a really cool game. I haven't played it yet. Kind of a mix of like a visual novel, puzzle game, and then rhythm parts. Uh, very interesting. I've, I've heard this game's quite good. Uh, one of uh, Sega's more interesting uh, games that they've put out. So definitely one of these days. I'll have to give this one a shot. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei, Double Survivor, Overclocked. Um, this game is awesome. Love this game. Uh, basically like a Fire Emblem style turn-based strategy RPG, but with the SMT demon fusing uh, that you typically get. And then a little bit of a press turn system thrown in there as well. I love this game. I love the story and characters. I love how dark it is. Uh, it's very long, really lengthy, super difficult. Uh, this game definitely tested, tested my skills quite a bit. But uh, yeah, just from start to finish, I really, really enjoyed this one. Also, like with all the SMT games, getting expensive now. Try to get this one now. This is a remake of the original game, which I think was a DS game, if I'm sure was not mistaken. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a DS game. So probably the definitive, the definitive version of that game. Uh, Majora's Mask, uh, my, my second favorite game of all time, my favorite Zelda game. Uh, absolute Masterpiece, the 3DS version makes it even better. Uh, just with the time limit stuff, some of that stuff. So some of the bosses, they've kind of ruined uh, a little bit, but I don't mind so much. It just makes the game a lot less tedious with some of the, the time stuff that they've done here. Um, best atmosphere in a game like Tide of Silent Hill 2. The sense of dread here is incredible. It's the best narrative Nintendo's ever done for a video game. In fact, it might be the only good narrative they've ever produced. Soundtrack from Koji Kondo is him at the top of his game. Uh, just, man, just what a brilliant fucking game. I uh, Just, man, it gets me emotional every time I play it and think about it. Uh, must play, and this to me is the definitive version of the game on the 3DS here. Uh, next up, uh, moving on with more Zelda, Link Between Worlds, another amazing game. Uh, a Link to the Past sequel of sorts, same world. Uh, but it's, it's, it's super enjoyable, maybe a little bit on the easy side, but I love what they did with the structure of this one that you could do so many things in different orders, especially with the items that you got, uh, an inspiration for Breath of the Wild later, of course. Uh, yeah, one of the must haves on the 3DS, definitely. I think this is a Nintendo Selects game as well, so it shouldn't be too, too expensive to get. Uh, Metroid, um... What do they think? Samus Returns, a remake of Metroid 2 on the NES. Uh, Mercury Steam, I've, like, hated all their games in the past, so it was a pleasant surprise that I loved this game. I think it's easily their best game. Uh, just amazing. I love the counter system in here. It just felt a lot uh, more action. Like, it feels a little bit more action-oriented, this one, but I still really love the exploration to it. Uh, the boss fights are amazing in this one. Just really challenging, satisfying boss fights. Um, yeah, uh, one of my favorite Metroid games. I, I think they completely nailed it uh, with this one. And a lot of, not a lot of people talk about this game, which is a shame. I think it's the, one of the 3DS's highlights for me. Uh, definitely worth getting, I think. Okay, now we've got uh, Kid Icarus Uprising. Fortunately, I don't have the box set with like that stand and some of the cards that came with it. Uh, but this game I also really enjoy. It's not the kind of game you can play for extended periods. It does hurt your hand after a while. Uh, but really enjoyed this. I actually really like the story and characters in, the, in here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And how like high energy this game is. Uh, I love the combat to it. Uh, tons of content here. It, it's it's crazy. Um, it would be really cool to see, to see a follow-up to this game on the Switch. Because I think this game is really underrated. I still don't think a lot of people have actually played this one. I, I think it's a must-have for the 3DS, if I'm being honest. Uh, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Uh, played this game a bunch when it came out. Probably put over 100 hours into it. Uh, it now that world is out, it feels a little quaint now. Uh, the old Monster Hunters, but uh, still really did love this one. Had a had a uh, absolute blast. Monster Hunter is one of my favorite series of all time, and uh, this game is yeah, it's surprisingly it's surprisingly good how they've adapted the controls for the 3DS. Um, although I mean I guess the series like it's well known for for a lot of handheld entries, especially on the PSP. Uh, although on that, that yeah, they used like the claw hand, right? But uh, yeah, no, this I think was one of the games that like used the circle pad pro attachment. I never had that, but uh, I always thought that was kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, great game. I don't know if it's really worth playing too much, especially when there's another Monster Hunter game for the 3DS. Um, and uh, you can, like Monster Hunter World to me is like the definitive Monster Hunter experience. Okay, we got Persona Q. Uh, I think this is like the launch edition. Not a big fan of this one. It's basically an Etrian Odyssey game with like a Persona skin, um, which I've never been a big fan of those games. I just find it a little tedious making the maps and the maze dungeons are just not for me. 
Uh, so that's why I didn't get the sequel. Uh, I think this and the sequel are probably getting expensive now, like with every SMT or Persona game. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I don't know. This didn't do it for me. I only put like maybe 10 hours before I dropped it. Not not really my my cup of tea. Okay, next up, Devil Survivor 2. Um, uh, another, well, what makes, what's the subtitle? Record Breaker. Uh, another kind of a remake of sorts of the second game for the original DS. Uh, just as great as the first one. Uh, it's probably better gameplay wise, although I can't really remember the story and characters in this one too much, but uh, yeah, still loved going through it. Uh, definitely some of my favorite SMT games. Really love that tactics uh, gameplay mixed with the SMT demon fusing and stuff like that. Good stuff. This game I'm sure is probably getting expensive now too, unfortunately. Uh, Dragon Quest 7. I need to get Dragon Quest 8 on 3DS and then I'll have Dragon Quest 4 through 8 all on like the DS line of systems, which is pretty cool that you can actually play all those. I uh, haven't played it. I'm not the biggest Dragon Quest fan, actually. Uh, it's almost purely like a collection thing for me, uh, which is probably, some people will probably be angry at that. So I, I might I might sell all my Dragon Quest games because I'm, I'm really not a fan of the series. Uh, but I don't know, maybe I'm just hoping one of the games does it for me, but the most recent one, Dragon Quest XI, it still didn't really do much for me. So I, I don't think there's any hope for me uh, liking this series. But uh, also, I try I would try to get Dragon Quest Seven and Eight pretty like now for 3ds if you're considering them they're gonna get expensive i can guarantee it um okay next up my favorite 3ds game uh smt4 uh, we've got this like box set here that they came out with uh that comes with a cool little mini strategy guide that covers like the first half of the game or so that i used constantly i thought it was very helpful uh man just amazing story and characters the battle system is just incredible and super addictive uh, i love the the story twist within like the first five hours um, it just, I, I playing this game, I could not put it down. Like it was one of those games where I would like, every time I would play it, I would play it for like eight hours straight. Like it was, it was pretty, it was pretty bad. Like I, I was so into this game and just the atmosphere and tone of it. Uh, and I'm super pumped for SMT5 if, if we can expect it to be as good as this game was, uh, which makes the apocalypse all the more disappointing that I just didn't like it near as much as, as this one. Uh, two more games. We're almost at the end here. Uh, Stella Glow, uh, another kind of uh, limited launch box set here. Uh, another tactics RPG. A lot of people really love this game. I I wasn't that into it. I I don't know. I thought it was kind of bland. Like I didn't care for the story and characters. The the gameplay I just I'd seen done better in so many other strategy RPGs. I just I don't know. It just didn't grab me. I I finished it. I think I'm pretty sure I even finished it. But I I don't know. It just didn't really grab me that much. Uh, Another game that I'm sure is, is getting expensive now, which is probably why I'm going to keep this. <laughs> and then finally, we've got uh, Legend of Legacy, another little launch edition box set here. This one's not expensive, though. Uh, this is kind of a weird game. It's almost like a saga game. I think it's done by the same, a lot of the same developers. Uh, so in that way, it's pretty... It's a pretty weird, hard to get into type of game. Uh, I couldn't get into it. I just thought it was... Like a Stella Go Glow, just kind of a bland game, with bland story and characters, and just kind of, I don't know, um, the battle system I didn't care for that much, and it got just way too difficult after a certain point this game. Uh, I wasn't interested in it already, so I kind of dropped it. Uh, but kind of a bummer note to, to go on there, but that's my 3DS collection. Uh, a lot more than I thought. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think Dragon Quest Eight is the big one I want. Maybe some other Nintendo games. Uh, let me know what you guys have in your collection, what you're kind of looking for right now, uh, what you thought of the 3DS library as a whole. Uh, overall, for me, I loved it. Uh, and as you can see, it's a big collection, a lot of quality games here. So I really do love the 3DS. But uh, anyways, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.